The term science fiction as we know it today is generally acknowledged to have been first used by Hugo Gernsback in the 1920s. The term had been used long before this, most notably for the first time by William Wilson in his work A Little Earnest Book Upon a Great Old Subject. We're referring to a comment by Thomas Campbell regarding fiction and poetry not being the reverse of the truth. Wilson stated that this applies especially to science fiction in which the revealed truths of science may be given, interwoven with a pleasant story which itself may be poetical and true. It should be noted that at this point in time, the term science fiction was not in popular use. Gernsback is often recognised as one of the modern founding fathers of science fiction, and the annual Hugo Awards are named after him in his honour. Gernsback published a number of technologically orientated magazines, mainly on electronics and radio equipment, which he would use as a vehicle to present his own stories, most notably Ralph 124C41+. These included magazines such as Modern Electrics and Electrical Experimenter, Science and Invention, and most famously Amazing Stories, amongst many others. It is with Amazing Stories in 1926 that the first bona fide science fiction magazine was published and the world was introduced to the American pulp science fiction story. Gernsback put forward the term science fiction in the first issue of Amazing Stories in order to describe the content of his magazine's tales. He saw it as an entertaining and didactic form of fiction which set new standards in literature, though by the time of the publication of another of Gernsback's magazines, Science Wonder Stories, he would discard this term for science fiction. Gernsback's own science fiction term was, as we can see, simply another way of describing those works which were generally considered scientific romances. By science fiction I mean the Jules Verne, H.G. Wells and Edgar Allan Poe type of story, a charming romance intermingled with scientific fact and prophetic vision. Not only do these amazing tales make tremendously interesting reading, they are always instructive. So the term science fiction had a relatively short lifespan before science fiction became popular. Another iconic editor of science fiction stories, one who would have enormous influence on his writers, was John Wood Campbell Jr. Campbell's role as editor of the magazine's astounding stories Astounding Science Fiction, and later Analogue, was crucial to the development of science fiction's golden age. Campbell thought that science fiction was to be taken seriously, and have a distinct relationship to the understanding of science and technology. As it had been pointed out before, science fiction was no more for scientists than ghost stories were for ghosts. However, no single editor or writer would have such a dominant influence on the shape that science fiction took until perhaps the work of Michael Murcock's New Worlds magazine, which would carry the flag for the mainly British New Wave in the 1960s and 70s. The golden age of science fiction was epitomised by the editorial influence of John W. Campbell. Campbell was a science fiction writer himself, and was responsible for the discovery of just about every major science fiction writer, including such famous names as A. E. Van Vogt, Robert A. Heinlein, Lester Del Rey, Theodore Sturgeon, L. Ron Hubbard, and Isaac Asimov. Campbell was a colossal influence on the genre and its writers between 1937 and the early 1960s. His attitude to what should be published as science fiction could sometimes be contradictory, with his initial approach towards real science and technology being at the heart of good science fiction. Roger Luckhurst notes that the employment of a number of scientific and engineering professionals by Campbell would create an engineer paradigm that underlies the emergence of American science fiction in the pre-1945 era. Later, and to the dismay of many writers who would epitomise that engineer paradigm, Campbell would develop a strong desire to see stories featuring psionics and psi-pars appear in his magazines. Typical works in this mode would include the likes of L. Ron Hubbard and A. E. Van Vogt, whose name became attached to this sort of mentally evolved superhero. It was specifically this type of hero that Frank Herbert would set up for a fall in his Dune series. Very often expressing right-wing views in his editorials, Campbell would come to alienate almost all of his writers, including long-term friends such as Robert A. Heinlein. Kingsley Amis in New Maps of Hell saw Campbell as a person whose vaunted crazy ideas 
coupled with the self-importance which he placed on science fiction, was giving the genre a seriously bad name. Amusingly, he puts it thus, Kicking out the cranks who seem bent on getting science fiction a bad name, John Campbell, the editor of Astounding with his Psy Machine and his interest in reincarnation and his Superman theory, Reginald Bretnor and A. E. Van Vaught, with their conversion to Korzybski's so-called general semantics, L. Ron Hubbard and A. E. Van Vaught and John Campbell, with the mysterious mental science of Dianetics, of one book on the subject, the blurb claims proudly that four of the first people who read it went insane. John W. Campbell's tenure as editor of these prominent magazines saw the birth of a number of major science fiction tropes and themes, ranging from the space operas of E. E. Doc Smith's Landsman series, the scientific legal dramas of Asimov's Robot series, Heinlein's speculative fiction, and the weird sci powers of L. Ron Hubbard's philosophies. Ironically, it was most likely Herbert's own use and interest of psionic powers in Dune that attracted Campbell to publish the story in the first place. Although corresponding regularly over the material, Frank Herbert and John W. Campbell never actually met in person. It was the inversion of the heroic theme in Dune Messiah that would prevent Campbell from publishing it. Having built ASF on the concept of the hero, Campbell did not accept the concept of the anti-hero, particularly an anti-hero whose failures are implicitly bound up with parapsychological faculties. The distinctions between hard science fiction focused on technology, science and engineering, which Campbell advocated as being purely what science fiction stories should be about, was contradicted by his later developing interest in psi powers and parapsychology. He did maintain that there could be a balance between the two, where authors could use such motifs to explore aspects of science fiction. The question was whether such things were possible or impossible, and if they were the former, then there was a case for them being in science fiction stories. As A. I. Berger notes, however, Dune simply overpowered such distinctions despite Herbert's foundation in the ecology of the deserts.